Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks, as well as co-hosts. Uh, welcome to RPG with DBJ. I am your host, DBJ, and we are in um, we are engaging in a project in which, uh, full disclosure, I am hoping to create a tabletop role playing game product, a PDF, um, maybe print on demand, um, most likely print on demand. And you guys are going to help me create this. We're going to do it collectively. And along the way, uh, why this, while this will benefit myself, um, hopefully this will benefit you guys as I talk openly and honestly about the creative process in terms of bringing something to the tabletop RPG community. This will be a fifth edition product although this will apply to to just about anything that you want to create. And hopefully, in general, this will help everyone out there with the creative process as well. Now, uh, we did start out with, uh, I created a Google Doc and uh, gave you guys a preliminary idea of what we're creating, something post-apocalyptic with, with a, uh, a random set of of idea generators and uh, it, in in my head I'm calling it like um, a fireball type of generalization because they're all like d6s and whatnot now today we're going to talk about killing your darlings it is when do you stop a project when do you delete it when do you crumple up the paper and throw it away um, and and what gets us to that point it's, honestly it's pretty easy to get to that point and Along the creative process, like who do we listen to? Do we it, do we stop because something like it already exists? Do we listen to people who say maybe you shouldn't be doing it? Um, uh, are we finding limitations in our own creative process? Like maybe I don't have the – if we're doing something literary, do we have the proper – literary skill set to do the thing. So today, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I'm going to bring up uh, the subject matter that we talked about yesterday. Uh, hey, Kylie, what's going on? I'll bring up the, the, I'll share the screen from what we talked about. Mm -hmm -hmm. And doo -doo -doo, bring it up on screen. All right. So here we have. I added a couple of a uh, uh, a couple of small assets to what we did yesterday. I'll bring us back up to what we were working on, and that was uh, we started out with uh, worms. <laughs> uh, there's there's a long list of prompts for like something strange and arcanic, um, uh, magical, uh, like post apocalyptic. Essentially, the i the generalized idea here is that magic has uh, it, it's it's going a little too far. More Cold War, more um, taking some of our Dungeons and Dragons tropes and post apocalypse and like kind of mixing them together and going like, what would happen if? And then taking it and pushing it out to its, its extreme. And so yesterday, and I, I some of these art assets I, I got off of uh, of ArtStation, but I'm not going to use them in in the product. But I'm a visual person, so I like to. I like to identify things visually, and I can very easily scan through a, a multi-page document image, and then I know exactly what we're talking about. But um, to narrow down our focus, I, you know, I had some uh, word prompts like animals, uh, adversaries here, antagonists. Uh, what were some other dangers, deceptions, desires? Uh, people, places, possessions, and sight, sounds, and sensations. And again. Uh, I I like the alliteration of like things that either rhyme or work together because it's a very easy mnemonic for my brain to identify. So I do that kind of thing. Like the the people, places, possessions is easy for me to remember if I've got a scrap sheet of paper and a blank notebook somewhere. You know, so that that's that's the reason behind that. Hey hey, red dice diaries here hanging out. Uh, must be waiting for some tea to warm uh, or <laughs> waiting for some warm water for some tea, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, to, again, today we'll talk about, I thought I would just talk uh, 
we're going to move on to what's our second one. Our second one is uh, Blazing Sun and Light. And uh, he, there's some, it would be very easy for us to fall into a, to a hey, let me grab my greatest idea from <laughs> Dark Sun or something like that. And I'm hoping that we can maneuver away from it. But also while we're doing this, I do want to talk about the imposter syndrome and killing your darlings and things like that. So what do I mean by killing your darlings? Uh, we can become, we could become very possessive of, of the things that we create. And a lot of times we don't want to, uh, we, we don't want to destroy them because we spend a lot of time on these things. Um, <laughs> Michael, you're so funny. He's like, all right, uh, do, 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 do. brain online, ideas online, keyboard, boop, boop, boop. all systems nominal. <laughs> oh, you have to have like the uh, the, the 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 vaguely um, uh, uh, disrupted communication systems. <laughs> exactly. Red dice is. I wish I've been on a strong coffee since five a.m. Ooh, yeah, eleven a.m. here at the moment. I was lured by those sexy red dice at the bottom of the screen. Mmm, the red dice, yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with different o overlays and underlays and backgrounds and things like that. Eh, it'll get there. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out or something. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I'll do with it. Trying to get the colors right, but just playing around with it. All right, so one of, the, one of the, and. and you guys know I always bring up movies and television, and I like. I if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be talking about those those same things, movies and television and such. And uh, one comment I heard from someone that I that I really hold dear is they said that one of the best creative tools is a pair of scissors. Uh, essentially, it's like it's the delete button. It's the yeah, you probably don't need this, and. Usually what happens when, when someone, like a filmmaker, a, a writer, a director or something comes to, to a, a project, they, they overproduce so that they can cut away. And uh, I am of the mindset of overproducing. I like to overwrite things that we have, uh, whether it's, if I can, if you guys don't mind, if you're watching this visually to let me slide down here, uh, I have a lot of these, these, uh, all caps prompts for post-apocalypse. And chances are these are going to combine together, not be used together as they, they were like with the sludge and water. Will, will, will we, some of those prompts be combined with or blend with like when we talked about worms and slugs yesterday? Well, probably disease would be this would be something similar, but maybe just maybe it might be a prompt on its own and separate. So I'd rather overwrite than underwrite. So down here we have, I I've, I've still have a ton of other prompts and things like rust and constructs, dust and sand, acid rain, gases and smoke and uh, insects, fungus and mold, insanity, broken lands, volcanism and earth. And then uh, I, I'd love to do something with cities. And it always, uh, again, this is just a, a spark to, for the creative process. Uh, we all know what an Acropolis is, or at least we, we, we can come up with an idea of what it is, both real world and fantastical, uh, something magical, arcane, or, or whatnot. But I, we don't see the other opolises when it comes to other types of magic. And I thought maybe th maybe those might be prompts. Heck, we might even skip from what was above and go to go to some of these. But I thought I would save them for the for towards the end of the week. But anyway, like a chronopolis, um, e like evocation magic down here. Um, uh, conjuring magic, uh, il illusion magic, those kind of things, Trans uh, transmutation magics, and so on and so forth. So I thought maybe try to play with something like that. And and the reason for again overwriting it, or the or trying to overwrite, trying to shoot further ahead than conceptually I might be able to reach is because I always want to reach further than my arms can, can touch. If that makes sense. I want to, uh, you know, would, would this document with, you know, 
200, <laughs> 200 D6 tables plus another, you know, 58 on the end, back end or something. Uh, is this really how it's going to look, how it's going to work? I don't know yet, but I don't want to stop myself from the creative process. But I do want to know um, in my head that at some point, some of this is going to get cut. Uh, it might it might get so big that <laughs> that it might need to be split off into two projects um, or a lot of that might be saved for later, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike's like, uh, this is when, when there's too much on the plate, creation can be overwhelming. One of the greatest creative, creative tools is restrictions. And, and I try to restrict, uh, I absolutely agree with you. So, th th and it's a weird, I'm talking out loud about my creative process, which doesn't work for everyone else. But what I do is I, I like to use a ton of prompts to focus my creativity because I can get really scatterbrained. And but I put so many prompts that when I when the scatterbraining starts to take over and derail the creative process, I can then go like like, for example, I want to start working on this blazing sun light, bright light, you know, may, maybe. I'm thinking like um, it is very much right now. My brain is going towards like dark sun and and dune and sand and deserts, but I'm hoping to spark sideways from that. But there's also a chance because you know you start thinking of dune, you start thinking of sandworms. Boom! I might have to get distracted, and it's already in the dock. I might move up to like the worms or something like that. Or, you know, if you've got a, a, a desert place and it's like an oasis, I might slide down the document and go, okay, well, you know what? Let me place that bit of information down below somewhere and then move back up into the document, boom, getting getting that restriction. And yeah, uh, a blank slate <laughs> is often a little bit too much. You, don't, you really don't want a completely blank slate. You really want to you really want to have some form of like, okay, I'm only going to use uh, three three colors, and I'm only going to make squares or or some such, right? Sludge slugs, yeah. That. Oh man, uh, Mike says a Rustopolis, a city of broken and malfunctioning constructs, abandoned after the apocalypse because the controlling spells malfunction. Now that city is maximum overdrive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Rustopolis upside, no worms. Rustopolis downside, the toaster is out to get you. And I was thinking about that too. A, 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 a rusted construct, maybe even, maybe even like uh, s this is a weird thing to think of, but so much rust, it's like oxidized iron filings that blow through the air or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, irony ripped from the Discord. Mice as a player character race. I was thinking about that too, or or at least part of the project might be because we've released we Watsi whatever the community has released our hold on what race means that it's possible to create. Um, heritage and legacy uh, options that players may be able to layer onto their player character based on the region that they come from this post-apocalyptic world. Like, for example, replacing a character trait with one of those like wormy, sluggy, snail-like things or something. Yeah, Vince, I'm, I'm with you. I always limit, try to limit myself uh, in, in terms of the creative process. So we'll get into the document in a minute, but I want to see what you co-hosts have to say. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, you know what? I, that's that's a very common one, and I and I'll talk about that with killing the darlings as well. Mike says, uh, "Thought the world doesn't rotate, so one half is desert, the other is is eternal darkness and cold." Uh, one one of the things about well, all right, let me let me just make sure I get all these uh, comments. Mm, 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 mm. See, Vince talks about his. He's been working on a deck building uh, RPG for a while. My deck building RPG had a ton of limitations. Only one card type, no cards replacing dice. Uh, cards are spirits with multiple aspects, no spirit world, etc. And and it could be really creative, even though you might back yourself into a corner, which I kind of like backing myself to a corner uh, creatively. When you start 
adding more limitations. You're like, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with that? And uh, I, I know plenty of players get frustrated with limitations, but it could be pretty, it be pretty, uh, pretty, it, it can push you to think of things outside the box. And Michael says, creating zones with different threats to force the PCs to adapt to different threats. Well, that and and that's the point of what I'm I'm coming up with this document that it won't. It's not. We're we're. I don't want to create a world that other people live in. I want to create the tools that so they can create their own world that their own people can live in. Uh, it, essentially, so I won't be. I won't be promoting like, oh, this is a world with names and places and things like that. No, not at all. Uh, Mm -mm. post-apocalyptic setting might have species that would survive and have survived there rats sharks reptiles insects um all bases of new pc races uh and and i was also thinking it'd be uh, like not only would could they be pc races but they might be like a player may play someone that has been say infected with something or used as a host or something of that where the 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 player's race is more a series of of interactions with the world some of them temporary some of them not right let's see uh vince says if the world would not rotate it simply would mean that a day equals a year so it will become night but only half a year if you want a world that has two distinct dark light side it needs to rotate slow not necessarily uh you, i mean you you're thinking of logic this doesn't have to have logic at all uh especially if the world doesn't rotate but what if the sun rotates it's like black on one side and, and light on the other or something like that right and those those things can be yeah in Right, right, right. Infected or host might be a class. Um, maybe, mm, may, maybe, maybe. I I thought it would fit more into like a racial type, um, where in, infected or host might be like a player could play that permanently, or it might be something temporary. Where you know, that, it doesn't matter. It's it, yes, <laughs> snail folk. <laughs> yeah, might work up snail folk later. All right, so. Um, as we ta start talking about uh, killing the darlings, there is there is this there's a thing amongst creators. Uh, sometimes it's called imposter syndrome, and that is coming up with an idea, and then others just basically tell you that idea has already been created. And the the, the problem with that, <laughs> listening to that, is uh, every idea has already been created. Yeah, Vincent, Vincent. Yeah, Tesla says sounds more like a template. Eh, I think it's just narrative. Uh, but yes, I but I do agree. I mean, you know, uh, it's it's a matter of separating ourselves from what um, it's semantics, right? Like if I play a character in Dungeons and Dragons that's a dragonborn, okay, we, we have attached to it that the dragonborn are a race that exists in the, in, in the game. But there's nothing says saying, th there's nothing about being a dragonborn that means that I have to have scales or that I have to listen to the legacy of the game or that even the title of that can needs to be dragonborn, right? It's, um, it's, it, it's about ignoring the semantics and making what you want. Like, who's to say that Instead of making it called Dragonborn, that a shaman hasn't gifted the player with the ability to call upon the spirits of uh, the the Arctic and the cold, and I want to make a, a like a, a a very stereotypical Viking like character that can breathe the the winter I don't know um, the Winter Father or something breathes through my body or whatever, right? It's it's separating one from the other, so. Yeah, that's all. It's just a, it's just a matter of when you're in a creative process, uh, you know, stepping outside of those things. Yeah, Vince. Vince is saying, uh, ideas are worthless. Execution is 95% of what makes something good. A bad idea that is executed well is infinitely better than a good idea executed badly. Uh, I can't agree with you. 
I cannot agree with you more. Um, for, because what ends up happening is that it's very easy for us to, it's very easy for us to have someone say, "Oh, well, isn't that just Lord of the Rings?" And, and then you go, "Oh," mm, and then you pout, and you're like, "Man, I thought my idea was was unique." And they go, "Well, there was a there was a movie and an anime and a novel that was written about that." Blah blah blah. And the the problem is that the idea doesn't even the product doesn't even exist yet. And it's already, it can already be shut down. Uh, a good example would be Shadowrun. Now, I I get it that you might not want elves and trolls and dragons in your cyberware and your dystopian dark future, but Shadowrun is is beloved <laughs> across the, the geekosphere, right? And someone had to say, wouldn't it be cool if, and I guarantee you, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people were also thinking the exact same thing and their friends were like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And we already had Dungeons and Dragons. Why do we need that when cyberpunk? Leave your magic out of my cyberpunk, right? Someone decided to create it and then once it's created, cool, you know, Star Wars and Space Wizards, you know, someone's like, oh, that's stupid until somebody creates it. So it's, you got to execute the thing. You, you, you have to. And understanding that it's not about making something so new that it's never been done before. It's making the, making the thing with your voice. So it's, it's the creative process knowing that uh, whatever you, you want a YouTube channel and you're like, well, everybody does movie reviews. Well, yeah, but no one does movie reviews using your voice. No one does makes t-shirts using like your designs or your snarky uh, comments or whatever the case might be. So, uh, getting into let, let's get into look, let me pull this down here for a minute. But I I love that comment there, Vince. I, I love it. I'm, I'm gonna leave it up here for for a little while. Now, getting into this um. Blazing Sun and Light, what I was thinking is that that it's not just about heat, but it's about light itself. Um, I think a, I think we did a video on the on um oh oh I, I can't remember the name of the video, but it, and it's been a little while, but we did a video on what happens if the lights, the Dungeons and Dragons light spell went out of control like it became ubiquitous that everyone had it or something and so i'm i'm kind of thinking of that that kind of thing where um th th there's there's so much light there's no darkness cuz we 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 know darkness we know grim dark but i was like what would be the opposite of that so uh, anyway that's where what i was thinking of like uh i'm going to go with antagonists i'm going to go with um, how do I put this? Um, light uh, demons, and I'm gonna uh put in parentheses, um, anti shadow demons. Um, I'm thinking of I I don't I numerically stat blocky. I don't know exactly where I'm going with it, but I'm thinking of like these glowing. Uh, beings, May maybe they are radiant energy, maybe not, but but that's where my, my brain is going. Oh, you got to have possessions, um, orbs, uh, staves, st staves, <laughs> staves uh, crystals of light, mm -mm 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 -mm. sights, Sites, of course, um, dancing lights everywhere. Every sheesh. Um, mm, 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 mm. let's see, blindness. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, blindness and uh, what is it? Uh, Lack of 
sleep and no fear of the dark. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's where. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, Kylie, I, I absolutely agree with um with what Vince said. I love you point out about good and bad ideas. And and here's the thing about th this is a, a very difficult thing to do when we are creators, and that is uh, we have to create past our worst selves. And there is no way the very first thing that we create is going to be that good. It it just isn't. Um, the, 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 the idea of we, we have to write and create and draw and with other creative things like dance and play music past our worst selves. And that is very difficult to do. And, uh, because that means that we have to expose our worst creative process to people and then have it trashed in order to move past that point. And it's and most common individuals, it's very difficult for them to even accept that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, thought riffing on the shadow and mentioned goblinization might be a thing. Say as Yuanti desire to become more snake like. Perhaps there's a class where the species literally evolves because of. Oops, I can't see the end of it. Oh, because of uh, of a parasite. Ooh. See, I, I do like that idea, too. What if Hunger of Hadar became a portal? That was my, my thing about the Black Sun. Ah, okay, I get it. I get it. Mm -mm -mm. Going back up here. Vince, says, Vince mentions, uh, when I was writing um, Astrocitus, Monty Cook Games made a space supplement for Numenera with spaceship rules inside, and those sucked. <laughs> Extremely basic, no effort at all. I still think my execution is much better. And that'll happen a lot as well, where... Someone's like, oh, someone already thought of that. And you're like, yeah, but they haven't thought of it with my voice, right? <laughs> Vince says, oh, desire of water, water dripping. Maybe we'll put that under water finders, shade makers, um, burning sunlight sounds or water sizzling. Okay, so what we'll do is, and, and here again, is why we're, I'm going to add this with uh, where am I at? We're down here as well. So with the water, so I'm going to go with um, sizzling or ter evaporation. Am I did I spell it right? Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, people, uh, okay. Uh, divine, divine, no, 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 okay. Uh, Google, let's see, what are we gonna do? What is the name of a person, person who finds water with a stick? Yeah, what is that person? Dowsing? Water dousing. Okay, let's see. A P. Shade and darkness places. All right. Uh, get from a bunch of um, ton of some comments. <laughs> Vince is like, I'm so delighted to see that native speakers also struggle with those words. Oh, oh, listen. <laughs> Just because I'm a, uh, I pr pretend to be an English speaker doesn't make me a master of it at all. Yeah, at all. Burning sunlight. Oh, so, I'm sorry. So going back to something, I just want to capture some of your, uh, you guys pop it in some comments there. Um, demonic lights, the seared or branders. Hmm. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. There's Seer. Ers. Sears? Ah. ah, that's a tongue twister. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm-mm. We'll put that in the, the the with the water dripping. I'm thinking. Well, desire would be yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we 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 absolutely need what? Let's go into what uh, what. You co-hosts are all talking about here. Mm-hmm. Now, Vince says this sounds like much like visitors the infection, <laughs> which he's writing for Worlds of Darkness. Uh, it, th- that small portion of it would. I'm 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 not trying to steal an idea at all. Uh, inspired, sure, sure, because uh, yeah, sandstale handlers. Okay, uh, I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to hold on off of that just a little bit. Because uh, we do have those. Not We don't have to... Don't be obliged that what we worked on yesterday co- applies to today. Because we, we talked about worms and snails and slugs. Uh, yes, but not necessarily. So I, I'm going to hold off on that just a little bit. I mean, sure, we are building, but I don't own one on top of the other. But we're going to go go towards other things like like uh insects and predators and things of that nature because the the idea is that people are going they're going to be people who just are weird, so weirded out by like worms and slugs that they're not going to want to be part of that at all uh but i do agree with like what mike says about salt is might be a currency i absolutely agree with that uh mike says thought if the world is sunbaked then the worms need to be less slimy and more armored much like much like mealworms which are actual uh, actually grow up slimy worms bake in the sun no 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 um again we're not i don't want us to be beholden to the thing previous because when, when they meet together absolutely when they sep when they're separated the one doesn't need to be attached to the other one if that makes sense mm. i did not know that herbal tea Mm-mm-mm-mm. Herbal tea nomads often mix water with tea. They say it quenches thirst better than pure water. Uh, I love tea. Uh, super sweet. Yeah, you heard it. I, I said it. <laughs> P- possessions tattoos burned into the skin. Ooh, I'm loving that. Ooh, okay. Um, so we will call, um, let's call it a light. Branding pet to hope. Uh, let's, see, let's put markings and then. Oh, I, I just saw something. Um, glass lenses. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, glass lenses used to focus the sun. To heat things up, maybe for like you like a like a solar forge, glass uh, solar forge. There we go. How about that? Solar forge. I'll, I'll put this separate. Um, glass lenses. Uh, or in the uh, prisms. How about that? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. See there, okay. All right, got some new comments here. <laughs> Wormtopia. <laughs> now, now I do think um, uh, Red Dice says, "Don't forget that most the, that most urgent supply in Wormtopia is salt." I I was thinking that there would be a um, how interesting it would be for people since we did talk about wormtopia and slugs and all that kind of stuff that people would maybe live on salt flats to stay away from them. And uh, again, we're using the salt flats and the salt being important that to leave these, 
various places of salt flats, they would take with them salt that they would sprinkle around their encampments and, and uh, again, uh, using that as like an ec economic resource. And when they travel, they use the salt as like almost like pathway, maybe even throwing it in front of them or when they make encampments, they, they place it underneath their, their, uh, their tents and whatnot, or something like that. Like they might, and, <laughs> Dead man says, "Ooh, sun forged like war forged. Ooh, shit, we gotta put this down. Uh, people, let's put that at, that down under. We'll put that. We'll put that under adversaries. Um, sun forged, forged." Forge, forged, forged. <laughs> uh, yeah. A sun forged. Hmm. A sun forged would be awesome. A ton of lenses on the roof instead of a typical oven. You hold metal up on the focal point until it's red hot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like you could be you could blast sand into glass or uh metal ore and instead of you you might have to I don't know, use scaffolding or something to get it at the focal point so that it would melt or so I don't I I, I don't know if it'd be possible to do something like that, but sure. But but hell yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you there, Deadman. Uh, Red Dice says uh, that'd be a cool idea. Some sort of potion making class where they produce various tinctures and remedies using natural resources. Um, I also was thinking like maybe this is a real weird thing, but maybe even the things you could discover the things out in nature because on their own that's what they are. Like uh, instead of a healing potion, you pull out you pull out one of your handy slugs out of your bag and you stick it on the wound and you're done or something like that. So s some cultures would like would would embrace that and others would just start to like uh, throw up in their mouth a little bit. Uh, not exactly sure how you would. Uh, I have an idea of how you would be able to uh, to mechanically adjust for people who are and aren't against that but it's just a thing like this repose because my comment went missing really okay okay ank hag riders ant people burrowing lizard folk cultures giant pill bugs used as beasts of burden gargantuan flying beetles uh worm hags oh we're getting into all right so hmm so now here here's here's the thing where uh overriding comes because i did put down like insects without insects down here so but naturally it might come out of placing it here <laughs> right so uh let's go with let's go with like um insect incest insect <laughs> riders uh parentheses beetles uh scorp beetles scorpions um uh, what is uh, whatever uh, spiders? Because I think there's trapdoor spiders are out there in like a uh, blasted region. Spiders, flies. Um, of course, we we have a uh, those same animals. Beetles, mm -mm. and uh, I don't know if this, but I'm gonna put it down anyway. Scarabs. Mm, 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 mm. If I can catch everything, grasshoppers. Ooh, grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, scorpions. Dead man brings up a glass golem. <laughs> and Dead Man says, uh, yeah, a crystal golem shooting rays of prismatic light. Yeah, <laughs> damn. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's make that 
I'm going to put that in adversaries because they might be allies or enemies. So here we go. Glass columns. Ooh. Uh, focus. Focus. Rays of light for various uh, magics. I'll put it that way. Uh, blinding, blasting, maybe maybe we, if you want to go even further, it could be like healing if you want to go that way with a more of a radiant thing. Uh, I love it. I love it. Not too many deceptions, although maybe there might be a thing. Mm, 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 mm. Glass golems. My, my brain is it, it. We got scorpions. Sentient desert spider race. I'm liking that. Driders. I'll put them down as antagonists, but but um, it separate from. I'm going to put driders. Riders, not, not drow, right? Like uh, a separate race rather than, rather than the, the, the usuals and whatnot. Like, you know, drow things, uh, sand gecko. Oh yeah, that's right. Animals, despite a race, animal sand geckos. Riding extremely fast pre to prevent burning their feet. <laughs> <laughs> skittering across the sands and stuff. Yeah. Hells yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave this highlight a little bit. Ooh. How about... Here we go. Sand geckos. How about... What would, would we put under possessions? I'm gonna I'm gonna just put it as a um, sand ships and um, sailing uh, um, light sail vessels. Um, maybe something is can be created that kind of like um, like an ocean can can. Uh, sail on the sands. Uh, I know D Dark Sun has something like that, but I think they use wheels in the dust because it's not really sand, it's more dust. But anyway. Mm -mm. Vince mentions, I recently listened to Red Moon role-playing when they played Red Sun, okay? They had a race of giant bees that collect water and honey and are extremely valuable to sand races. Okay. Um, Mike brings up uh, dust methods, dust genasi, sentient spells, spells wandering the waste. Ooh. Here we go. Let's go with dust methods and genasi. And I'm going to uh, add to this and. Uh, Thus, devils. Some like um, maybe they're just wandering elementals. They're kind of like a combination of the two, or maybe they're all related. And and they had Thrycreen. Vince McKees mentions that they had Thrycreen as player race. They only needed water like once per week in the desert. They were super effective. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Drow are sunburned elves and their hair is white because the sun bleached it. Hmm. Sand bending. <laughs> uh, actually, that kind of make that does actually make sense. There was in the Elf Quest, in the Elf Quest books, if you guys ever remember the old Elf Quest books from the 80s, yeah, they the those elves became darker skinned because they lived in the sun when the elves the, the elves were attacked by Cro Magnon Man. They scattered around uh, prehistoric earth and then they settle in different areas and that, that makes a lot of sense actually a lot more sense than drow having black skin that lived in the underdark 
uh, genetically, although, you know, magically they were cursed, so I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Mike Ma- says, I have a burrowing desert beetle species called the the Coleope. They're typically medium, but have juggernaut mutations and have a colossal hive mother that's a gigantic psionic s- grub. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Dead Man says, uh, Dark Sun used skis on the boat sailing the Silt Sea. Yeah, it, and it's like in Dark Sun, it's not really supposed to be sand. So, oh, okay. So here we go. Let's uh, places. I'm going to put. Uh, let's let's go with something so non-traditional sand snat <laughs> sand, um, and of course I. Yes, I've meant non-traditional. Uh, let's put uh, black uh, glass shards, um, powdered rust, um, talc, uh, pulverized bone. ETC. How about something like that? Like uh, it's it's not sand, but it's something that that ha- that is fluidic that acts like sand, but it isn't sand. And and people could pick and choose, or maybe there's different regions where it, it is what it could be. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Vince, I recently had the idea of different kinds of fire. Like white fire would produce more light, red fire is hotter, blue fire burns underwater, etc. Ooh, okay, okay. Hmm. I'll put that in there. Maybe in the aftermath, in the aftermath, magic got blamed for the downfall, and now magic has a stigma, and now they're starting to use tech a bit more. You could play up the magic tech conflict. I think there's a space for that. I think we, I think we have a space for that, and we, we can, we can do that conflict where, if you want to add in more technological things, like for example, there's, there's nothing preventing us from claiming that in a fantasy world, this fantasy world exists on top of our world today, but it's destroyed. Like, oh, there's dragons and magic and blah blah blah, but there's also burned out office buildings and. Oh, is that a, is that a, what's a common site? A, um, an empty river or ocean or something with a cargo ship that's half sunk in the sand or whatever. And so, I mean, if we very well could do something like that. And then as more people are using tech or maybe abandoned technological things that they're just reskins of what we already have, like with artificers and alchemists and things like that. Uh, Vince says you could maybe add a new kind of light magic that uses prisms to create different colored light as a new magic system. I would have to find something like that. (laughs) What are you talking about there, Kylie? The land of, ooh. (laughs) Should that that be the name of it? The land of, ooh. You got to pronounce it that way, not, Ooh. No, 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 no. The land of ooh. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm feeling you on the on the new light, like a light magic system, uh, which just sounds funny saying it that way. A magic system based on light. Ah, huh. ah. Huh. There's a lot of prismatic spells, but there's no prismatic school. Hmm. Okay. Concept. Given the apocalypse, spell casting by any class has a progressively greater chance of animating the spell they cast or summoning an elemental. Either either is bad, say, 1 in 20 chance plus spell level. I, I like that idea. Uh, I even... Side note for NWorld for levelup5e.com. You can go over to check it out. Uh, I, I One of the... Anyway, when we exploded the exploration pillar, we created living spells. I think it's... Uh, hit points, spell level times 10, cantrips acting as first level. They have an armor class of 10 plus the spell level. They have a movement rate, a uh, base movement rate of 10 feet per spell level. And as the spell, they can use it 
uh, each day, oh, I can't remember. Oh, there's a template that we used and we, we came up with. I can't, re oh, I can't remember it all. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, that you could actually ac absolutely accidentally create spells. <laughs> Kyle was like, it's the land of ooh. And Red Dice is like, no, more like the land of ooh. Oh, I didn't know I didn't know that. Adventure time is ooh, post-apocalyptic fantasy realm. I never heard of such a thing. See, you learn something every day. All right, so I've got there you guys popped in a bunch of ideas, and I'm gonna have to go into this. Uh so let me get back in it. Diary, um, document. Uh, Red Dice says, I was thinking for deceptions, maybe magic got, got blamed for the apocalypse, but wasn't actually to blame. It was just used as a scapegoat. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. All right. So we have ourselves. Mm, 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 mm. Magic was not to blame. I misspelled it. There we go. Um, that is pretty astounding. But we're going to keep that there because that's a possibility. Maybe, maybe someone or something or agents or something created that. I'm going to put this under desires. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll put this here. Quote, light magic school using uh, visual light in prisms for effects might be a it might be a um, a new school in this world maybe maybe maybe. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Ashen Plains. A vast desert of ash created when every living thing in the region was cremated by the apocalypse. Ooh, ow, 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 ow. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's get let's get rid of the or no. Uh we'll just make another part. Let's see. Ashen. Planes. Uh, results of scenery of all living things. Now the, the we're um a ooh, what the heck just happened there? I, I didn't mean to skip that up. Um, we want to make sure that we don't, not that we don't, we we are world creating, but we're not creating a world, if that makes sense. Uh, we we want to give other people the opportunity. Free fertilizer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I did not know that. Thank you, Kylie. Adventure Time is an adorable cartoon, and it references D&D &D pretty often. I can't do that as it gets my alignment. Finn, the main character. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It's an adorable... Okay. Maybe. Maybe I might be able to use it as a palate cleanser when I'm all pissed off from work or something. Vampy. Hey, what's going on, Vampinoid? Vampinoid, additional elements in ooh are candy, slime, and lump. Lump is the anti-elemental, so like maybe void or shadow fell type magic. Ooh. Sounds like a fun subclass animator that uses this misfire chance to create living spells by choice. Hmm. All right. We're going to... Hmm. Living spells. All right. What, we, what we'll do is we'll put here... Uh, I'll put random living spells. Spells. But I'm... You know what? I'm going to... This might become its own thing. I'm going to bold this up. And uh, because I could see this becoming its own thing, meaning like there might, 
could you imagine a society of like maybe they are um okay uh, they are exiles rebels these living spells having fragments of the people who cast them and interactions with other people they are they are a uh, enslaved race they're they're used and harnessed and they're hiding and st- something like that like the the living spells are the the halflings of the world like some of them are pretty dangerous like they're burning in fire others can heal other like they're they're but they actually have personalities and like like the warforged who are sentient constructs that were supposed to be mindless maybe living spells are that that thing, right? I don't know. I, I, my, my brain is not describing it, but I, but I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm really feeling this. <laughs> uh, I, I'm like it. I like it a lot. And I, I think, uh, ooh, ashtray. Okay, okay. Sorry, I know I'm sk- skipping around. I'm trying to trying to find things. Uh, ash. Traders. Um, uh, let's see. Used for fertilization Zation. and rare crops. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. Cause, because you're going to need to find you're going to need the ash to mix with moisture which you won't have with water which you don't have a lot of but you you need you need at least one if you don't have the other one <laughs> void walker being a class that travels through the multi the multiple tears tears in reality created by the cataclysm oh you're going way off you're going <laughs> true um, let's, let's bring it down a little bit. Uh, we, I haven't gotten there quite yet, although that sounds like a whole nother book. Not, not, not saying no, but cause I, I think, I think there's even a possibility of, of making, doing Planescape over again. I don't mean literally rewriting what Planescape came out, which is, which is, uh, immense and powerful and beautiful. But what I mean is a, a, series of ways to create other realms of existence using building blocks to say, hey, here are the rules of this new plane of existence that could be used uh, randomly or on a fly or something like that. Vince says, I'm writing a... (laughs) Thanks, Mike. Uh, Vince says, I am writing the Living Spells subclass. Sounds perfect for Sorcerer. That, yeah, yeah, why not? (laughs) Kind of cool to be surrounded by a bunch of of spells that have their own personalities. I'm going to create, I'm going to cast a light spell and a light spells. Like, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> what, where are you going? <laughs> oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. You guys are talking. You, I think you guys are talking about the, the, uh, the adventures of or, it, adventure land or something. <laughs> you sure are. Mike's like Vince and I are riffing on each other like a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah, I can't keep up. Deadman says crystal trees that grow crystal fruit. Ooh. All right, we're gonna go crystal trees. Yes, I know. I I know. I know. I see it. Crystal trees. Um, grow. I, I like gemstone. Gemstone. I'm going to call fruits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, uh, would you want to eat them? And, and some people were like, hells yes. <laughs> and other people were like, mm, I don't know. Oh, oh man, red dice! I see a baby shaking that ash. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Oh yeah, mm. what is it? Can, can, let, let me touch that ash. 
pat, pats the pats the canvas bag. <laughs> Vince is like brainstorming is so fun. Yeah, yeah. Ash elves. Okay, can we? I'm 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 being very facetious here because I was thinking the same thing, but I was like, how come how come elves get all the love? Why is it that elves get love? We don't. Why don't we have like thirty different types of halflings and sixteen types of gnomes and forty seven types of uh, uh orc combinations? Come on, we we have to give some love to somebody else. <laughs> yep, just go full emo and call them Ashen. I think. Uh, the ravaged wastelands of Cryfoth. I think they have like ashen elves or something like that. Uh, I would. Here's how I would do it, though. Okay, I would just call them. I would just call them the ashen, and not attach it to like elf or something like that. I'm gonna call them. A, I will say a not, not div, divergent. No, 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 no. Um, divergent slash mutagen race. Uh, maybe, maybe there is something in the world. Slimelings. <laughs> oh, they're good gardeners. All right, uh, Vince says they're good gardeners. I, ooh, yeah, a good and a little dangerous. There's something. Side note: There's something appearing here in my head as this is coming together. That internally, as we're starting to create these, I'm going to call them regions, for lack of a better word. That we, internally, the people that live within these regions are finding a way to live and survive. Externally people are looking at them as um, horrible, <laughs> horrible uh, scars on the land. Like, for example, the people that live with the, the slugs and the worms and whatnot, from looking at them from the outside, it's like they probably smell terrible. They're covered in like oils and slimes. They, they have this nasty relationship with these things that eat decomposing uh, materials and stuff. And the same thing with these like ashen folk that I could imagine them not being a race, like they're not elves. They are people who live here who are transformed by what's there. And, you know, they're dusty and covered and their skin is molted and stuff. And like, and, uh, and yet internally they're like, they're, they're these strange, but great farmers and whatnot. I, I don't know. Uh, it makes me think of mobile farms, uh, mobile like farms. All right, so I'm, I'm going to put that down in a minute. Uh, Red Dice says, I was thinking like the old religious practice of people um, dabbing themselves in ash as a sign of penance. Maybe the ash people blame themselves for the apocalypse and dab themselves with ash. And it also might be, because uh, I actually included this in one of the cinematic environments, maybe people, the ash itself is a protection against the ravages of where they live, right? So it's a combination of tradition and... Um, penance and honor and things like that. Like maybe there's a, the, the idea of covering yourself in ash is, is, is like, you, you better do it or you're going to get uh, affected by the, the, the outside. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there it is. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Mufa says slime eater. You sun baked two kids calling each other names. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, can you imagine like a, I don't know, uh, a slug druid or something uh, is with the party and they open up their little pouch or something or they open up their cloak and, and uh, you know, attach their armor like these leech like things. And they're like, I'm just going to heal your wounds. And they're like, get that away from me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right. So let's see. Possession. I'll. Possessions. I'll put colored ash used to protect exposed flesh. And uh, I, I put colored because maybe, maybe the colors have significance or 
it's ba- you know it's based on the region like red versus a uh, black versus a uh, an ivory versus like i don't know it have green or something i don't know uh it, it doesn't matter we can come up with something <laughs> uh <laughs> just turn the just turn halflings into anthropomorphic grubs <laughs> yeah no eyes just just the mouth just a smart ass mouth <laughs> no eyes <laughs> with a couple of grubs i liked it I'm, i i i actually like that hey um my grub can move through the space of creatures that are medium sized or larger cuz i just turn into a ball and roll <laughs> i like that i like that a lot I really do. <laughs> Grublings, snail folk, ratlings, beetlemen. I'm thinking all non-standard races. I, me too. Me too. <laughs> the roach folk. <laughs> Wa- wasplings. That would be pretty. That's pretty incredible. I I, I like this. All right. I, I'm I'm of course I'm not recruiting you guys to do it, but what would it would be kind of cool to see a write up on what a what races like that would be. Like a, a a beetle race that can hey we everybody knows that f- we we have a love hate relationship with the simple ability to fly but if you're a beetle race that can or like a grasshopper race or a locust race that can fly for short distances jump bzz, pff, land maybe it's very tiring or taxing or something you know. The whole usable so many times, once one or more times during a short or long rest or something. I could see something like that, along with like being able to eat and digest things and climbing speeds and hiding in, in the sand or something. Um, Red Dice says maybe rubbing the different types of ash from different woods has odd effects, like the herbal teas discussed earlier. Mm. Although that might be a little bit rude to walk up to somebody and like scrape their skin. <laughs> Off into your boiling water. You're like, scrape, 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 scrape. That's pretty good. <laughs> Colored ash like in the Indian holiday of Holly. I am I have zero inform, um, context to it. I kind of didn't want to mention it because I don't want to offend the people who's religious. <laughs> um, things go, but yes, not... Not stealing the religious part of it, but the idea. I mean, there are. Uh, oh, what's the African tribe? Um, they use a well. They use more of a red clay. Uh, okay, my mind went. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, link it to proficiency. Mike says, "Fly your move rate a number of times per rest equal to your proficiency." I think that's good because he because. You start out with two, max of six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a sugar golem. Uh, uh, all right, no, 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 no. Oh, all right, uh, you're, you're heading somewhere. You're heading somewhere. Here we go. We're going to put salt elemental. Uh, we, we also ha- we have to put in like a ash, 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 dust. Um, sand elemental. I'll put that as antagonist or something. Uh, all right, let's fit. Um, we're oh, we we went well over. All right, guys, <laughs> we we went well over, and and we we're going to keep going on. We're going to keep going on. We've got uh, a bunch of different categories. Uh, to get into, let me let me push this back up to the very top of this concept here. Arcana unleashed. All right, so guys, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me get back into this. Sugar golem, don't leave it in the sun or it becomes a caramel. Go- <laughs> Is it caramel or caramel? Because those might be two different variations of the same. <laughs> I love it. I, I I love it so much. Elemental, get in my mouth. You do it. You get in my mouth. That's a really terrible meme. Don't, guys, don't do that. Don't, don't capture that. Uh, Mike says, imagine what happens when the slime and the ash mix. It might cause items made from this mixture to be possessed by the spirits of the dead. (laughs) Yeah, 
hey, two player characters, you guys are going to have to be, someone's going to have to be on, on at the front and the back of the party because when you guys mix together, we can't, we can't even separate you. Like, you're, you're getting dust on my slime. You're getting slime on my dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit the dead man's like caramel's the good golem caramel's the evil one wait a minute dem's fighting words <laughs> dem's are fighting words oh, that's funny red dice diary says i love how this world is becoming a battle of the taste buds and sensations who will win in a battle between sweet and U- umani i've never heard that term Sweet and sour. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like left Twix and right Twix. <laughs> hey, I'm a right Twixer all day long. I'm not like you left Twixers. Vampires, <laughs> oh, look how far we got. Yeah, yeah, I got to get out of here. All right, guys, we, we, we're going to... I didn't even get to talk about the killing our darlings part of it too much, but whatever. Um, we're going to continue this project. Again, I, I this is uh, we're going to crowdsource this thing that's going to become real. This isn't how it's going to look. This isn't what it's going to uh, essentially be presented as. But I wanted us. I wanted to come up with a well, Nami is, is the neutral flavor, like gravy. Most meats. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tess. But what difference does it make? Trap triggers. Yep, I got caught. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Really? D- Seriously? At the end of the show, you guys come up with all these salt vampires. Uh, they drink sweat instead of blood. Holy shit. I, I can't I can't not put that in there. I I can't not do that. Salt. Oh brother, salsa salt vampires. Drain moisture and cause dehydration. I I will guess that they can do that to things that might not be living as well. They, mm-mm-mm. <laughs> We're going to say, uh, ride eternal, shiny, and ashen. All right, guys, I'm going to turn off, I mean, uh, get the uh, document out the way. So the idea is that we're, we're, this is going to, the idea is that this is going to become a, for lack of a better word, an apocalypse engine. And we're going to, we have these regions, we're going to make some cities, and this will be a place where we can pick and choose and layer, and other people can use them and not use them. Maybe the slugs weird people out, and they're just like, I'm not going to use that section, (laughs) right? So we have to have that option as well. Uh, Oh, shit. Really, Vampinoid? Just imagining a salt vampire scaring people to eat their tears. Ow. Ow. <laughs> oh, man. Kylie, really? Honey, come quick. There's a vampire family at the Salt Lick. Oh. <laughs> like a bunch of deer. Now, see, Kylie's trying to make it, trying to make it seem sweet. You guys are like, and of course, Red Dice Diary's got to come up and, hey, Mister Large, mm, your tears to stay, sustain me. And then, of course, you have to have somebody's tongue looking their scared face, going like, <laughs> lick. <laughs> oh, nasty, nasty, nasty. All right, guys, I we gotta we gotta go, but I, I would, I'm almost tempted to open up the document to let you guys edit it, but I, that might cause a little bit more trouble than a little bit. So I'm going to keep it closed for now. Um, I don't know how this is going to look laid out. It, it definitely won't look in that grid shape at all, but uh, lots of art assets we're going to pull in. Um, there's a way to, to pull free art assets and then turn them into what we want. 
Uh, I'm not the layout artist. Uh, Alex actually is. But as long as something's finished, he's far more willing to work on a thing than a little bit. So I guarantee you that. Rob's our editor. So we'll we'll see how this goes. It's looked like I I thought as this as this uh project came up that there might be some problems. There's no problems at all. You guys are f full of it. <laughs> Ideas I mean. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, wow, you guys are just going on and on and on. Quick make a salt circle. They can't come inside salt vampire laughing maniacally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The salt vampires, you know, allow the slugs to get to you. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get out of here. Um, we were supposed to ride a... a get out of here. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, but yes. But also, what a, what a, what a great... What a great decision for players to make. Oh, we can beat the, the salt vampires about the head and shoulders, or we can leave our salt behind for them and run, but we don't have the salt we need to protect ourselves from the other thing. And I love those decision decision points because that allows the danger to be placed right in the player's hands, and that's perfect. That's perfect. So, guys, everyone, have a great one. I'm going to be late, but whatever. It's it's fine. They need me. Um, you guys have a great day tomorrow. Of course, we're going to continue this project, and I, I hope it'll sustain itself because I don't want this project going too long. Um, yeah, <laughs> like Red Dice says, resource dilemma. Nice. Hell's yes. Hell's yes. I'm a, I'm gonna actually put that in the doc just before we get out of here. But I'm going to close this down. You guys take <laughs> have a great one. Thank you very much. Um, there. Every see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> virtual hug yeah thank you kylie have a great one guys i'll see you later